Hey everyone, it is Karinjin here, and I bring you another video for what I've been doing the past week. I have started my second character. It's been going very slow, simply because I've had to work every day. But uh, it's the weekend now, so I wanted to give you guys an update on how things have been going. Just is, I am playing a Herald of Agony Pathfinder using Ward, Evasion, and Spell Dodge, and Spell Block. Uh, we are level 83 right now. I've really only started to get the character fleshed out, and there's a lot of changes I'm actually going to be making very shortly because I did a lot of POB warrioring because I wasn't happy with how things were going and where my POB was going to end up. But I wanted to go over the theory behind the build and where I hope it'll end up. So there won't be a POB today because I don't think that's where I'm going to end up. There's still a lot of work to be done on the build. I'll be writing a POB once I am more sure of how things are going and once I've tested it in-game. The concept behind this build is don't get hit, and when we do, have a lot of mitigation. So, this is, goes along with the idea of ward for sure. Basically, the idea is we have a ton of ward. If we use our iron flask real quick, you'll see we have about 2200. And because we're Pathfinder, the iron flask is typically up. I really need to get auto-proccing on these things, it's just don't have the currency for it. So, we have about 2200 ward. In the end, we'll probably have about 3500, maybe even 4k if we get really good gear. The idea is we have lots and lots of evasion rating. Right now I do not have grace, so this will go higher. We're hoping for about 85% before Wind Dancer. But we have a lot of evasion rating. We have a lot of spell dodge. Right now I have about 66%. And then we have 75 spell block from the unique replica mist wall. So this is basically the idea. We don't get hit. When we do get hit, we have ward and we have... Wind Dancer effect, less attack damage taken if you've not been hit recently. And I was looking at Crab Layers, Aspect of the Crab. It actually gives you a lot of Fizz damage reduction every now and then when you do get hit. And similar to Ward, it goes away when you do get hit. But at the moment, I have not been able to figure out a way to get it to fit into the build. Once again, don't really pay attention to this tree. It's going to be changing a lot uh, in the very near future for me. So that is the general concept of the build. And we are using Herald of Agony for damage. Then the question is, how are we getting all this ward? Well, we're using ward bases, and some things have changed this league for this tank style. We're going to be using ward gloves, boots, and eventually helmet. I'll talk about this in a second. And we're using skin of the lords for the 100% increased global defenses. So, the thing that has changed, two things changed with ward this league and ward items. The first is that ward's base cooldown to refresh went from 5 seconds to 4. And the second thing is there is now a new suffix on the gloves and boots and helmet and that is engraving is the tier 3 version here it is the faster restoration of ward that faster restoration of ward can roll up to 58 percent on a t1 roll and if you get three mods that are t1 on your three gear pieces you're going to be looking at about a 1.5 second recharge for your ward the moment i have tier 3 on this and tier 3 on this and our ward restoration time is uh 2.1 seconds right now that's already very very good so after 2.1 seconds of having lost our ward we will get another all of our hp back second part of the tank is going to be all of our evasion rating which we're simply going to be getting from an evasion flask the global defense is here eventually grace and then wind dancer the spell dodge we are getting from acrobatics and then 150 percent eventually Spell Suppression, capping this at the 75% Spell Dodge. People tend to not take this, but I am, because I don't want to be getting hit and losing my ward. That is the more important thing, as opposed to mitigation. The second half of this is Replica Mist Wall. Plus 75% chance to block spell damage if you have not blocked recently. So, while this is up, we have 24 attack block and 75 spell block. If we take the 25% chance that acrobatics does not work, we will then check the 75% chance whether our spell block will work. If this blocks it, then cool, I have not taken damage, and that will go on cooldown. If it doesn't block it, then it won't go on cooldown, and we have all our ward to mitigate it. So the first hit we take, Replica Mistwall blocks it, then we lose the spell block, but we keep all the spell dodge, so then there's still only a 25% chance that the next spell will hit us. Assuming it does, we then have all of our ward to mitigate it. That pretty much covers the tank philosophy for this character. Restoration is definitely an issue right now. Our recovery is pretty much non-existent. We have no life leech and we have no regen at the moment. However, 
what I am planning to do for our recovery is very interesting. I'm going to be using Recoup. Right now it's just on this helmet, but we will be getting rid of this helmet eventually. And I will have a Flask Suffix Craft, which comes from Cinder Swallow, but we can craft on any Flask, which gives us Recoup during Flask Effect. And then that will be farther scaled by Flask Effect from Pathfinder in our tree. And we should be looking at something like 25% Recoup just from that Flask. I might end up getting more, we'll see. The second half of it is actually the skin of the lords here. We have Eternal Youth. So Eternal Youth, the keystone over here between Marauder and Templar, it gives us 50% less life regenerate and 50% less total recovery from Leech. So this is why we're not using Regen or Leech. Instead, Energy Shield Recharge applies to life. This means that the recharge mechanic of after 2 seconds of not taking damage to your life pool, your life will start Recharging at 33% of your total per second. So this goes again with the concept of just don't get hit. If we don't get hit, then our life will recover. This does mean, however, that things like a dots really start to become a problem. So I'm spending a lot of effort to try and counteract that. We're going to be using jewels with a chance to avoid being ignited, capping that at 100%. I'm going to be using jewels with chance to avoid being bled. I believe I have uh, one right here to avoid bleeding. Going to get that to 100%. And then eventually I'll be using the Pantheon here to be unaffected by Burning Ground, one of the most common damage over times in the game, and hopefully this will cover us for most damage over time. Thankfully, because we are a summoner build essentially, we don't have to spend a lot of time standing still, meaning that we can pretty much spend most of our time dodging dots on the ground. The next thing is damage. Well, we're using Herald of Agony. That is our skill of choice here. We have Herald of Agony right now, it's about 70% reservation. And I have no other ROs except for Clarity. This is going to be getting changed as our year investment goes up. We are going to be using Grace and Malevolence. So Herald of Agony is actually a really good choice because we are using Skin of the Lords. This plus two level to socket of gems gives us plus two here and plus two on an Empower. So we end up with a lot of gem levels, which is the main scaling point of Herald of Agony. Because we are a summoner, things get a little clunky. Um, we're going to be doing all of our damage scaling through gem levels. Here and here. But the clear is still never going to be very good because it's Herald of Agony. Well, Pathfinder actually comes in the clutch here. We're going to be using Proliferation. This Proliferation does actually work with Herald of Agony, assuming the poison kills the enemy. So, once we get into tankier monsters, at the moment it's a bit inconsistent. But once we get into tankier monsters, the hit will stop killing things, and it'll actually be the poison after the fact from the Herald of Agony that will be killing things. When an enemy dies from poison, whether it was inflicted by totems, mines, or minions, it does count as you killing the enemy. Meaning, on kill effects do proc, so we do actually get this recovery on kill, which is a very nice thing during clear. It also means that this proliferation procs. When this proliferation procs, it actually counts as us poisoning the enemy it proliferated for, which means that things like Plague Bear actually work with this build when we are clearing. So, not only do we get poison proliferation from our Herald of Agony, we also get Plague Bear, both of which will severely improve our uh, ability to clear. And so that's what we're working on right now, and I'm hopeful that this will result in an actually pretty smooth clear playstyle once the damage is there, and once the Pearl really starts taking off. We're getting all of our minion chance to poison from uh, Eye Jewels, and we're using a Darkness and Throne because it really, really helps with this, and each of these have a chance to poison enemies on hit. It rolls from 10 to 15%. Uh, we need a good few of these to get our capped chance to poison with minions, and so pretty much all of my uh, Eye Jewels around here are chance to poison. Eventually we'll be running the Unique Ghastly Jewel for damage over time multi. And then I guess a bit more damage as well because we are going to be running enough of them to cap that. So as far as the Maw of Conquest helmet, well, we're using this Unaffected by Poison. That's why I'm using this helmet for the Unaffected by Poison. Because to get our Herald of Agony damage, we have to keep up Virulent Stacks. And part of the ability to do that is going to be using Winter Orb, Chance to Poison, GMP, and Faster Casting in our four link here. Winter Orb, we have 100% chance to poison, because Herald of Agony gives chance to poison. And we're using Divergent Herald of Agony for another 20%. We then also have Herald of Agony buff effect from Circle of Nostalgia, plus chance to poison, gives our Winter Orb 100% chance to poison. We then have chance to poison, giving us our flat chaos damage for poisoning. And bam, we've got all these poisons to proc our Herald of Agony virulent stacks. But that tends to not be enough. 
So the other half of the equation is the golden rule. Every time we poison, it is reflected back to us. This means that we essentially double the virulent stacks that we get for our Herald of Agony. It also gives us a nice chunk of chaos resistance because we pretty much have minimum like 40 stacks and often more than that. However, the golden rule typically is good alone because we simply don't do that much damage with Winter Orb after a damage of 64. <laughs> The problem is this proliferation. I mentioned that when it proliferates, it counts as us poisoning, not our minion. Meaning, when it proliferates, it will reflect to us from Golden Rule. So, we have to get unaffected by poison. We can't be immune to poison, or we wouldn't get the virulent stacks. So we need unaffected by poison. This is one source of it, this unique helmet, Maw of Conquest, and otherwise this item is pretty much completely useless. We get some life, and we get the recoup, and that's it. It's not a good use of our helmet slot, and we want to replace this as soon as possible. The other option, and the one I will eventually be going for, is a Watcher's Eye. There is a Malevolence Watcher's Eye mod that just simply says you are unaffected by poison while affected by Malevolence. So we will get Malevolence into this build after we do more and different pathing, uh, and I'm higher level. We will get Malevolence, and that will allow us to be unaffected by poison that way. Unfortunately, that jewel is pretty expensive right now, so that's going to be a little bit down the way. But replacing this helmet with a ward helmet gets us a lot of power, both in tank and offense, because then we can roll some implicits and stuff with influence mods, and probably more able to get a nice enchant. So yeah, that pretty much covers the build. Um, I'm going to give you guys a quick little demonstration of what I am talking about and what we are doing. Let's do a summit map. Seems okay. The reduced chance to block might be a little scary, but I think we will be okay. Let's give this a go. I won't show you the whole map, but let's give an idea what we're doing. Basically, uh, let's avoid the red beast. That seems like a huge pain in the butt. We have our winter orb proccing our Herald of Agony. As you can see, our plague bear is already fully capped, and now we can walk around and plague bear a bunch of enemies so that they die. As you can see, the clear speed is pretty mediocre at the moment. It can be inconsistent with how the Herald of Agony does its targeting. But the damage is pretty good. This is a T14 map, and we're operating on pretty budget right now. Uh, there's a, like, probably like 10 times the damage we're doing right now is currently uh, unused right, uh, because I simply don't have the gear to do it. And we will be getting there hopefully soon. Having some mana issues. I'm dropping down our Orb of Storms for a bit of uh, putting Curse and Cull. And this is pretty much the build. Um, I'm hopeful that with a lot more investment, because I there is a significant amount of room for this build to improve, uh, I will be getting this damage a lot better, and hopefully the tank a lot better. Anyways, that pretty much covers just a bit of a review of what we're doing and the build concept. Uh, I'm not going to have a POB ready for this video, because simply the character is very much in a still work in progress state right now. So a POB will be coming later once the build is more refined, and I actually have it leveled up and geared properly. At the moment, though, it feels pretty good, and I think the tank actually feels great. The clear is definitely the rough part, but damage has a lot of room to grow right now. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I hope you will come and check out the updates to this video. I will see you all later, and have a good one.